Hi guys, nice to see you again. We are in business now. Last time we were discussing about a little project we put on the breadboard. If you remember, we randomly chose these three digits, three, four, seven, and we want now to transfer that project because you cannot put this one on the door. You want to transfer this project on a nice little printed board and to solder it. So here it is. The smallest printed board you're gonna find for this project, it's exactly what we measured last time. This was, this was three times seven centimeter, okay? So that's the board you need. And the first component you're going to place on the board is going to be this guy. This guy, short reminder from the last time, It has several terminals, which are representing resistors, all of them in the same body. But this one, I'm gonna put my finger on, sorry, not my finger. I'm gonna point the little terminal here, this one. In the top of it, it has a gray dot. And this is the common for all the resistors. I'm gonna tell you again how this is working. And this has to be placed, the dot in the button. So we have three of them. I don't even have the ones required for the project because for the project you just need a network resistor with eight terminals. So seven resistors plus the common. I have a much bigger one, but I'm gonna deal with what I have. So my network resistor is so long that the last pin I had to fold and to keep it here in the top because it's unused because I don't have enough holes here. I only have 10 holes and my resistors, they have 11. So if you order the, the good ones, I'm gonna have mines in a couple of days, but right now I don't have it. Then take a look, how do you mount them? You leave one row of holes alone, then you place one such single inline uh, package resistor. Then you leave five holes free and you place another one and you leave other five holes free, five rows free, and you place another one. Why is this? Because in the spaces between, you're going to mount the digits. So the ones we used last time were 6760, which are common anode. These ones I have here are 6780 common cathode, it won't matter. The only condition is all the three of them were depending how many uh, digits do you need for your number, all of them have to be the same. So you cannot mix some um, common anodes and common cathodes, either all common anodes or all common cathodes, okay? So you're going to place them here with the decimal point in the bottom, and you're going to leave here two holes free, and one is gonna remain in the top, and you're going to mount the others similar way, very easy. Take a look, how easy are they? But now there is a little thing. At the end, when you're going to solder all that, you're going to mount also the little terminal block to where you're going to mount the two wires for the power, for five volts. And as you notice, this guy here is a bit too high. So if you have to place in the top of it a little piece of plastic or something like this, this one tends to be higher than the rest, which is not good. But if you notice, the terminals of these digits are very long. So what did I do? I used a kind of prop, a support. I turned them on the back, so belly up like this. And then when I'm pushing all the terminals back, the digits, they go on the other side. And here I only have just a little part of the terminal remaining. And then I'm going to solder one terminal of each just to make sure they stay in place. One here, one here and one here. I'm gonna check it on the other side to make sure, take a look, 
they are at the same level, but they are higher than the printed board. So then, by taking the terminal block, this was the position with the decimal points in the bottom, you are going to be able to mount it right here, right in the center, okay? Be careful because the holes on the printed board are exactly the same diameter as the pins of this terminal block, so you're going to have a bit of trouble placing it here. So you need a bit of patience. That I'm going to try. So with a bit of patience, I think we are going to succeed. Because again, everything is about the uh, diameter. See? So at this point, if you take a look, the digits and the terminal block are at the same height. So this is what you should do, okay? Be careful also because you need the openings outside. Here you're going to mount the two wires for the power. Don't put them reverse way, okay? So it's going to look like that. Now, when you solder it, I have one already prepared for you guys. You're going to see it like that. Take a look. It's the same as this one. Same as this one. Same procedure. And here you have the wires for the power and this is where you have your number, exactly the one on the breadboard we checked last time. But this is solid because it's soldered. Now, how do you solder all that? Because here is the whole point how to make that project, okay? Now, let me show you something. We know from the last time we talked about these digits that there is a correspondence between the segments on the seven segment display and the terminal numbers. So there, I prepared here for you the wiring, how this should be done if you want to display the number one, or you want to display number two, or three, and so on, and to cover any of the 10 figures of the decimal base. How is this working? Let me remind you about the network resistor. This one in the bottom here represents the common for all the resistors. What does it mean? It means that if I draw here a line, like this, from here to this point, there is a resistor. From here to this point is another resistor, and so on. Anytime you have a hole like this one, you have a resistor connected between the common. I don't draw the rest of them, but the thing is actually, why not? So on this drawing I used here, you have the common. And again, the common is marked by a gray dot on the network resistor. And on my drawing here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine resistors. The ones you order may only have seven. You only need seven because you have seven segments. And this represents the digit itself. Now, let's suppose I want to display the number one. For the number one, remember, you need the segments B and C. We did this before. So take a look. Here is the B. I took a wire from here, and the wire goes to this point. From this point, from this hole actually, it goes here through the resistor and through the common, it goes to the common. So, if here I put the ground, which is the negative of my power supply, and this is the common anode for my digit, I'm gonna put it to the positive of the power supply. Now take a look, the positive comes here on the common anode, then, I'm going to have the segment B coming to a resistor, the segment C coming to another resistor. Take a look, B and C. Only these ones are going to be lit, not the others. So if you do the wiring like this, you're going to display the number one. Similarly, 
if I want to display the number seven. What segments do you need for number seven? You need A, B, and C. So the B and the C are exactly the same as before, but additionally you need A. A is located right here, so I'm gonna have another wire coming to here. So another wire coming from here, from A to the resistor. So you only connect the resistors by wiring, by soldering wiring, to display the number you want. Now, there is a trick. And uh, all the people involved in doing uh, printed boards, designing printed boards, they know that. And the trick is related to the fact that in the moment you want to do the soldering because here, if you want to see the number seven, you don't see underneath and you cannot solder underneath the digit here. To do the soldering, you have to flip it belly up on the other side, 180 degrees. But when you do this, the segment which was on the top right, which was the B, the top right, which was the B. Now, if you take a look, it comes here on the top left. So it's gonna be very difficult to watch this drawing here and to do the wiring. So for that reason, the trick is right here. I have another one for you here. And this one was called the component side. When you are taking a look from the top of the components, okay? But what you need in order to do the soldering and to not be lost with the wires is this one. It's called the solder side. Now, what's the difference? Take a look. I flipped it, belly up. And we take a look at the two figures together. Let's say, uh, just give me a second. Okay. I want to display the number one as before. When I flip it, 180 degrees, belly up, I still want to display the number one. But take a look, now my B is shown on the top left, not on the top right, because the digit is flipped. So from the B, I need to do the wiring to the resistor. It's the same wire as before, but I'm showing you how the wire is gonna look like when you take a look from the solder side. So if I take a look from here, I take a look from here and I watch, you take a look, my number seven is here. Now it's gonna, is on the right side. Now it's gonna become the one on the left, on here. And you are going to see in that situation for the number seven, okay? So uh, for the number seven is right here. So for the number seven, you are going to see two wires here, these are the wires. And the third one right here, this is the one, because these are representing the connections for the segments A, B, and C. This is what you need for the number seven, A, B, and C. And here I'm showing you, depending on the number you have to display for your apartment, how do you do the wiring for any of the numbers here you have to place, okay? So this is the solder side, and this is the component side. Guess what? Both pages, you find them already in the folder called Civic Number on the Google Drive. So I'm gonna put the link in the description of the video. So that's your first real project you do. So what is this about again? Is after you check your number on the breadboard to see how it's working, you see here the little resistors connected here and there. Instead of these little resistors, I just ordered this guy. It's the simplest possible way to do the wiring, guys. And take a look how nice it looks. And in the moment you place, in the moment you place a little piece of plastic or even such a paper sheet in the top of it, nobody can see the components underneath. They only see the beautiful number and nothing else. See? So now you have your wires, and these wires, they should go where? Because you don't have a big power supply like this, and it's not required. The power supply required for the project is a five volt one. Where do you find it? Any old phone you don't use anymore, you pick up the power supply of the phone, and guess what? 
all of them, they deliver 5 volts, so you can use it. Theoretically, you could also use this jack, power jack, but unfortunately, the uh, thickness of the pins is 1.2 millimeters, so it's thicker than the hole right here in the bottom, so this is why I preferred to order and to use a terminal block instead. I consider it more practical for this kind of project, okay? So again, this is going to be your first real project to do. Let's suppose you want to move, no big deal. You can either leave it to the next tenant of the, of the apartment he's gonna be, or she, they're gonna be very, very uh, uh, impressed. And you can make a new one because now you know how to do it. Or you can just pick it up and by modifying the wiring according to the diagram, then you can modify the, the, the numbers by redoing the wiring when required. So far, so good. Now, it's not all. For the next time, we're gonna make a more complicated one. For the next version of the project, we're going to use this kind. The digits are going to be a bit bigger, but you're gonna have some switches here. These are called mini dip switches. So to be prepared for the next time, you should order these. And now I'm gonna to turn to the computer to see how to find them. So right here on my preferred site, abra.com, you just type here, deep switch, and then they display for you all versions for the deep switches. This is the one you need. The one you need is for seven standard positions. So you can either buy this one, or if the worst comes to worst, you can buy this one with eight, but this is the best one to buy because you have seven segments. And then it doesn't matter the color because mines are having uh, uh, exactly seven. It's another brand, it doesn't matter. And if you do, what you're gonna get we go back to my old project here. It is like that. So my old project here, when I was showing it to you at the beginning, how to mount it on the door, if I remove the plastic cover off it, okay. See? In the bottom here, you have the switches. And by using the switches, take a look. I just changed my number instead of one, now you have a seven, you see? It was one, now it's seven. Here for this one, it's six. And if I just move on the other side of the corridor, sorry, uh, it's gonna be this one. Yeah, now it's five. So by just moving one switch, you have six, you have five. And by playing with the switches here, you can actually change any number from here between zero to nine. And this is what they're gonna do next time. How do we do next time? Using digits, network resistors, and the mini dip switches. So far so good. Thank you very much guys for watching. See you next time, bye-bye.